Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and today we're gonna to be making this with Cinema 4D and Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Let's head on in. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. We're gonna get started with one of these preset scene files. You can get it for free down below. It's for Redshift, Arnold, and Octane, and I use it all the time because it has everything set up, including lights, all the render presets. Go grab it so you can follow along exactly. All right, once I have the scene file open, I can just go ahead and hide the shader ball by holding Option or Alt on my keyboard, clicking these little traffic lights. I'm just gonna essentially turn off the shader ball, turn off the ground so we have kind of a fresh start with just lights and render settings ready to go. Now, we need something to animate. Let's go ahead into our Models tab here in the Plus Library, and you can see I have a ton of these Happy Toolbox icons that are now included inside of the Grayscale Gorilla Library. You can grab any one of these. I think we're gonna start with this thumbs up icon. I'm just gonna add it to my scene by double clicking here in the library. It's gonna add it to my object menu. And I think I wanna scale this up. These by default are designed to be little teeny tiny icons. And for this one, I just wanna scale it up a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and grab scale and I'm gonna drag until it's a little bit larger in my scene. Now, if you're following along with the scene file, all the cameras are locked and protected so you don't move them. If you wanna move them, go ahead and just delete one of these protection tags. And now when I select my camera, I can orbit around and set up my scene. Okay, so we have this awesome glove. Let's go ahead and animate it. So it's going from a thumbs up to a thumbs down. Maybe we want an animation that goes thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's do it. So in this icon, in the model, you can see we have a few different ways to animate. We can animate from one of these nulls. And if we rotate these nulls, you can see it's more on the bottom of our object. And uh, you can see this is one way to do it. Boom, boom. Thumbs up, thumbs down, but I want it to go more from the center of the object. And if you grab the geometry itself right here, you can see if we do the same thing, it is now rotating from the middle. This is essentially what I want to animate. Now for this, we're gonna use Signal. Signal's a way to animate really quickly inside of Cinema 4D and it helps you do things like looping animations really, really quickly. So let me show you how easy it is to set up. In fact, if you have Drop Zone installed and in your interface, it's as easy as just dragging any parameter into Drop Zone and you will be automatically set up with a signal tag, which will be ready to animate. Watch how fast this goes. You just drag the B into drop zone. It will automatically make a signal tag and you are ready to animate. Now down here in signal, you can see we have some settings. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click this set linear button. Just go ahead and click this. And now it will animate automatically from the minimum to the maximum over the course of 90 frames, which is the default. Now. Right now, the minimum, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Redshift for now. Uh, you can see the minimum uh, is going from zero to the maximum of 90, negative 90 de degrees. Uh, and we, of course, want it to go from thumbs up to thumbs down. So the first thing we wanna do is click on swap min max. It's now gonna start at negative 90 and we want to end at 90 degrees. So now we have our animation and it is lasting over the course of 90 frames, which again is the default. If you have a different timeline, uh, length, you could just click on this match timeline button and it'll automatically swap this end from 90 to whatever your timeline is. Okay, so we have a linear move, which is fine. Sometimes you want a linear move, but we also have a ton of presets here in Signal. If you just click on this linear right here, you see we have uh, quite a few presets of ease-ins, ease-outs, and then some of these both uh, that do ease-in and ease-out. So um, you can hover over them. You can actually see uh, some of the animation in these little dots over in the corner. Uh, but one way to do it is to just go ahead and click on it and see what it looks like right in your viewport. You could change these really quickly. Uh, so this one is um, a pretty strong ease in and out. You can also go all the way up to exponential and you can see now we have a much faster move. Poo, poo. Um, and we also have more control. Let's say you want this to loop. Uh, let's say we want it to go down and then back up and do a full loop up and down and up and down and build a seamless loop out of this. Well, uh, we have some tools in Signal to help you do that. Uh, the first one is right here called Playback. So you can loop animations. Um, now, if you want to loop, it will essentially loop around over and over again, but uh, in this case, it will snap back to the first frame uh, and it won't give you that seamless looping. What you really want here is Ping Pong. What Ping Pong does is it animates up the signal and then down the signal. So it's going to uh, basically reverse itself to get back to the original. Um, so why aren't you seeing it? Well, 
Right now, we're animating all the way through to 90 frames. I'm just gonna reduce this by half. And this means that we're gonna go up uh, in 45 uh, frames and then back down the animation in 45 more. So now we have a perfectly looping seamless animation. And in fact, if we choose any of the other presets, uh, even just the sign here, you're gonna see uh, it always loops. It'll always come back to where it started. I'm gonna go back to an exponential because I love this kind of feel. And you can see now we have a perfectly looping animation. Now you might say, hey, uh, this is great, but what if I want it to go faster or slower? Well, you can change your timeline. Let's say uh, I want this to go a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and set this to 60 frames on our timeline. And all we have to do now is go into our end and cut that in half. So if you just divide your, um, uh, your entire timeline by half, you're now gonna get a full down animation and a full up animation, and it will seamlessly loop around. Um, now, this is just one parameter. This is just literally one rotation. But I did wanna show you over here, uh, let's go ahead and render this. This animation is built with another Happy Toolbox icon and two uh, signal tags, one for the scale and one for the rotation. And this one doesn't loop seamlessly. This one's more of an animation that pops on the screen. If you ever want an object to scale up and kind of bubble up into the scene, uh, signal's great for this. You use a scale tag and uh, you, or in other words, you just drag your scale into drop zone, just like we did for rotation. And you can use something like our elastic in and out preset to now animate. So let me just turn this off so you can see how fast this goes. And it's gonna have an initial scale animation and it's also layered with a rotation animation. So you could layer signal tags on top of each other. You could use extra nulls. You can um, use multiple signal tags to get very detailed layered animation and it gives you full control without having to mess around with keyframes. In fact, in this one, we're using the looper tag. Now, this is one of the modifiers that are here inside of Signal. And if you ever wanna learn more about this stuff, we have tons of training all about how to dig deeper into Signal. Wanted to keep this one light, just in case if you haven't played with it, it's very simple to get started. And you can see this one is doing um, a waving animation. And it's also doing a little bit of extra randomness here on the front and back. I'm gonna exaggerate this just so you can see it. But you can see we have three different types of rotation happening here. And we also have the scale as well. So uh, this is kind of showing you how much more complex you can get just by layering uh, signal tags. Okay, let's go back to the original thumbs up, thumbs down animation. And let's make sure that we make this look as good as possible because I don't wanna leave you hanging with just like a black and white render here. Let's talk about finishing this up with some really beautiful, simple textures and a clean background. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a material to our thumbs up. Uh, right before we do that, let's go ahead into our HDRI and scroll down and you're gonna see background. I'm just gonna turn off background for now and just make sure it's black on white. And then we're gonna add a background at the very end. Okay, so let's pick out a material. Something that might work well for this is to come up to materials and you can just search for plastic. We have a ton of beautiful modern plastics from uh, just basic scratch plastic, clean. We have all the subsurface scattering, but I think what I really want uh, are these here, these colorful plastics. And I wanted to show you all the beautiful colors here. And there's also a ton of like patterns and displacement in these as well. So uh, this one's really fun. Uh, but I think I do wanna go with something like the speckled. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up onto our thumbs up. And you can see we have all this nice uh, uh, little flecks and specks. And there's also displacement built into these materials. Uh, it's really easy to set up. In fact, you could just use a redshift tag. And if you uh, just use a regular reg redshift tag in the geometry settings, um, you could turn on displacement. In fact, we have them here right in this default uh, scene file that we started with. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it and uh, drag it onto the thumbs up and then turn it on. So under the geometry tag, click on override. And now we get a displacement here on our thumbs up, thumbs down through the displacement of uh, the geometry. Uh, and in fact, if we pick something that is a little bit more obviously displaced, you'll see that it is actually bubbling up and giving us a uh, displaced geometry, which is really, really fun, especially if you do things like scale this up and down. So 
Uh, I kind of love this, <laughs> so let's stick with this for now. Maybe we change the color. Um, let's open this up. Um, going off script here, guys. Let's go ahead and open this up and change the color because um, many people don't know that you could change the color of any one of these plastics just by opening up the scene uh, or opening up the material and uh, selecting a new color right here in the color input. So, of course, you know, I love I love my reddish oranges. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those and uh, let's go ahead and close all this up and you'll see, boom, we're ready to rock. OK, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and grab a background. Uh, this is really simple to do in Redshift. All you have to do is go ahead in your Redshift menu, go to lights, go to dome light, and this will be a white light by default. Uh, I do not want it to affect anything in my scene. I just want a white background. So I'm going to go into details, turn down diffuse, diffusion. You can just turn all these down to be safe. And, uh, then you can make it whatever color you want. Um, uh, you may have seen me do this trick before. I love just picking the color, uh, picker, uh, picking something from my scene and getting a base color that already looks way better. Um, but then uh, now that I have a color, I can pick something less saturated or more saturated depending on uh, the vibe I'm going for. So we can go for like a dark, um, more moody look, or we can go for a more fresh, clean, modern kind of vibe up here. Okay, now that we have that, uh, let's go ahead and just scrub through our scene, make sure our thumbs down isn't going off the screen or anything. And let's do zoom in just a bit. So we could see a little bit more of all this beautiful uh, texture and displacement and subsurface scattering too that is coming through on this object. From here, you're ready to go and it only took us a few minutes to get this up and running inside of Cinema 4D using Grayscale Gorilla Tools. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into anything I showed you, we have tons of videos here at Grayscale Gorilla that dive into displacement, lighting, signal, plugins, materials, all that stuff. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos all about helping you work faster in Cinema 4D. Let us know if you have any comments down below. And with that, we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everyone.